here are some indentured pavers, for instance. And uh, um, this indenture was made out um, the 14th day of April 1635. Um, and I won't go through it all, um, but it says that it promises the said Elizabeth Adams to pay for her passage from England to Virginia and to find her with meat, drink, apparel and lodging with other necess necessaries during the said term and at the end of the said term to give her one whole year's provision of corn and one cast iron pot. Now that's not very much um, but it's better than nothing I guess. On the other hand, we have one for a male servant and it reads much the same except the Freedom Jews contain one whole year's provision of corn and 50 acres of land. Now the land on Freedom Jews generally varied from 30 to 50 acres. Um, so 50 acres is pretty good. But that's, that's all. Um, just the corn and the land. Um, there were other items normally granted besides the land. Um, you could be three barrels of corn, um, two sets of clothing, a gun, uh, a grubbing hoe, a weeding hoe, a cow, a horse, um, that was about it. Uh, and as I say, they could be negotiated. Um, one man was told that he wouldn't get his freedom dues, um, but at the end of the term he would get a new suit of clothing and a pistol. Um, I can only assume this was a negotiation and that's what he agreed to. Um, and now we come to the carrying of the tools. And something you need to think about if you are this type of character that you are a settler and you are going out bush and you are going to find the place where you're going to live and you're going to set yourself up. Um, you might take your family with you or you might go and make a rough shelter ready and then bring your family to the place later. Now some tools if they're being carried by family members or group members this is a this is a grubbing hoe. It's, uh, it's got a reasonably heavy head and as you can see it's quite narrow. Um, the idea of the grubbing hoe, of course, is with its long handles you can drive it deep into the ground and you can make fairly deep furrows with it, especially in, uh, in new ground, um, using it rather like you would a mattock or a pickaxe. And that was one of the items that was generally on the uh, freedoms, Freedom Jews list. Um, the other item, of course, was a weeding hoe. This is the head of a weeding hoe. Um, and as you see it has no handle and that is one of your choices. Do you or another family member or a group member carry a tool that can be used as a, uh, as a weapon with the handle already on it or if you have an item like this which is, is uh, not too bulky, fairly flat um, do you carry that in your pack and make a uh, make a handle for it when you get there? These are the choices you have. Um, if other family members are not armed in any other way, then having a hoe over your shoulder would probably be uh, better than nothing at all. So it's something to consider. Now. We've covered freedom dues, we've covered the tools, um, and as I said, they were negotiable. Um, the full list of freedom dues was rarely 
rarely granted. Um, there seems to have been more in the 17th century than in the 18th century. So by the mid 18th century, a lot of freedom dues are dropping away. You're not getting a lot. Now, if you were being granted land, say in Virginia, um, on somebody's plantation or part of a plantation, then it's not so bad. You don't need a horse or a cow to transport um, your corn or your tools or anything else. You, uh, you're probably fairly close and you could probably borrow a wagon to get your stuff there. But if you're going out bush and you're going away from the colony, then it's a different matter. You're going to be carrying it all on your shoulders if you haven't got an animal to cart it for you. Uh, 